So the first thing I want uh, in this video, the first thing for this video is that this is going to be like a little quiz. So I'm not going to go through every single term here and give you the answers. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and then have some of the answers uh, written down and I'll try to explain them. I'll explain the as written answers. So we have a few exercises for you to do on the next couple pages. Please try to do those exercises on your own um, and then um, we'll review them all at once. Okay, so let's stop the video. All right, and try out these exercises. Okay, so hopefully you were able to complete the uh, all the following exercises. So I'm just going to go through each of them. The first was uh, you just had to fill out the equations for the following types of stress, bending, axial, and shear. So bending stress is equal to the moment uh, times the distance from the centroid of your cross-section to uh, divided by the moment of inertia of your cross-sectional area. Um, axial stress is equal to just your normal force divided by your area. And then your shear stress is equal to the, your tangential force divided by your area. Or in the case of beam bending, it's equal to your shear force V times the first um, moment of inertia Q divided by the second moment of inertia or the pole uh, I divided by B, which is the width of the section. Um, so then we have um, stresses and stress planes. Uh, so your stress, different stress. So the key to this exercise is that the first index, so if you had sigma ij, right, or tau ij, is the first index is the plane, the um, uh, uh, is the direction that is normal to the plane. All right, and then the second one is the direction of your stress. All right, so for sigma zz, our, the plane that we were given, the z-axis was our, um, uh, was normal to the, pl the plane and then the uh, direction of the stress would be along the z-axis. Okay, so that'd be a normal a normal stress. While for our shear stress, we would say in this case the x-axis is normal to the plane, which is on the y-z plane, and then um, uh, the stress goes along the y-axis, which is why it's drawn along the y-axis. All right. So this is you could repeat the same process for all the different uh, uh, stress planes, and you could get you would get the following uh, directions. Okay, all right. So on the next page, you were given a you were asked to fill out the stress matrix based off of the pictured stress element. Um, so um, yeah, the easiest things I think to identify are the normal stresses. So you had the x-axis which was highlighted in red here. All right, um, so the, the stress vector is pointing along the x-axis, therefore that would be sigma xx. All right, then you had the y direction, which was going vertical. This was sigma yy. And then you had the stress, normal stress along the z-axis, which was sigma zz. All right. So those are the diagonal terms of your stress matrix. And then you had to identify any of the, um, uh, what should I call it? Any of the shear stresses. So there's four shear vectors that are drawn. We have this vector here would be tau x, y. This would be, but since it's going along the negative uh, axis, um, it's going to be, uh, be a negative, negative in magnitude. So... Um, so just to re recap, tau xy is negative in this case since it is directed along the negative z-axis on the positive front plane of the stress element here. Okay, So what I'm referring to specifically is this arrow here is pointing down 
uh, on the front plane. If it was pointing along the positive y-axis, this would be a positive stress, while since it's going along the negative y-axis, this is a negative shear stress. All right, and then the last case was just a uh, was just a plain stress example. Um, so you just had to calculate the strains given the following stresses. So you were given the uh, sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y. All right, and um, so if you look at um, uh, what should I call it? Uh, if you just plug those these values in to the three equations for epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon z, you should get the following numbers. All right. So that concludes the recap of last lecture. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. And uh, if there's anything missing, hopefully it's now clear. Uh, or if anything wasn't clear, hopefully it is now clear. All right.